All right, guys. So if you have not heard already, OCG, not TCG, OCG has got their new ban list, their January 1st, 2015 ban list. So I'm going to be going over it and give you my opinions about the list and what's going on with the list because this is one interesting list, I must say. One interesting list. So I'm going to go ahead, go over the list, um, try to you know, grasp understanding of why Konami OCG did these movements and, uh, you know, give my opinion of it. So as you guys know, I am a very conservative Yu-Gi-Oh player. I'm probably one of the most conservative Yu-Gi-Oh players that you will ever find on YouTube. So my thing is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this list threw me for a loop, a super loop, a fruity loop. So we're going to go ahead and go over this list and, uh, let's get started. So, um... That's so how you have like images from Cora Cora in the magazine telling like, hey, like this is what's limited, unbanned, and all that, all that. So here is the list. All right. So newly forbidden, heavy storm. All right. So they banned heavy storm. Of course, here in the TCG land, we have heavy storm ban. So that's fine. We know we've been playing with heavy storm ban for a cool minute now. The only thing that I wasn't a big fan of that they're taking away their heavy storm is they know they still got you know bottomless and compulse and all those freaking trap cards still at three. You know. Skill Drain is still at 3, Vanity is still at 3, Compulse still at 3, you know, so there's a ton of more just back row over there than over here, because to compensate for us, of course, getting, um, you know, Heavy Storm taken away from us, we got a couple of the back row hits, so, you know, cards like Compulse and Bottomless, Torrental, you know, stuff like that, they went down, so, you know, to kind of compensate for the fact that Heavy Storm was gone, but, you know, with their Heavy Storm gone, let's go ahead and see how they'll do without their Heavy Storm. All right, no, 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 this isn't fake. This isn't fake. Do not click from this video. I know you see it. You don't get a shit about Heavy Storm being banned. You're looking at this second card on the, for, on the limited list, and you're just like, what the fuck? Yes, yes. The king, the king of the ban list, the fucking emperor is back in OCG. Hello? Hello, Chaos Emperor, the return of Chaos Emperor. Now, I know what you guys are saying. That's broken. That's stupid. No, no. Konami OCG is on crack. No, that's dumb. You can't do that. You can't do that. Calm down, guys. Calm down. It got an errata. It got, I wouldn't say an errata, but a rewording was the fact. Because an errata, you just kind of change the card tag. So I, it's, got, it's got a new fact. It got a new fact. You know, just like what they did to Dark Track Fighter, we were like, oh, Dark Track Fighter can't come off. Man, it's too broken. And they changed it. And like, oh, yeah, it can come off. I can go to three. Who cares? It's not even good. So they did that, again, for a lot of the cards. So you can see there's a lot of cards here on this list. So they got Cat's Emperor, Sinister Serpent, um, Temple of the Kings, um, uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, Exchange the Spirit. Crush card uh, virus and ring of destruction. So there's a lot of the erratas. So I'm going to be in this video going over the erratas as well and my opinions of the erratas. What I think is the card okay to come back? Is it this is this is a balanced card or no? It should still be it's still broken. It should still be gone. So here we go. So let's go ahead and get started. So start it off. Chaos Emperor. Chaos Emperor changed to uh, cannot be normal summon set. Must be special summoned from your hand by banishing one dark and one light monster from your graveyard. All right. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. All right, that's fine. All right. During the turn, you activate this card's effect. You cannot activate other card effects. So that's what they added in. So if you use Chaos Emperor's effect, you can't activate any other card effects to turn that you activate this effect. Once per turn, you can pay 1,000 life points, send all cards on the field, and in both players' hands to the graveyard, then inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent for each of your opponent's cards sent by this effect. So they saying. So I change it to opponents instead of both players. It's just to opponents. So, is this balance? Is this a balanced version of Chaos Emperor? Can this? Is this okay? In my opinion, no. It's still dumb. It's still dumb. Like that. That. that, that I don't think they took the correct out of it. All right. So the balancing factor in here is that you can't activate any other card effects, except you know. Uh, cannot be activated the turn that you activate this effect. So, you know, back in the day where you go Chaos Emperor and Sangan hit the grave and Sangan would search you for Yadagaratsu, no more. Because Chaos Emperor, you can't activate any other card effect. So, that Sangan wouldn't get this effect. Alright, so one of the major decks here in the TCG that you might be scared of with this is, of course, Burning Abyss. So, you know, they run darks, they run lights, of course, Dante and the Burton. So, they will be able to drop Chaos Emperor. Chaos Emperor will go off, send all cards in both players' uh, hands and on the field to the graveyard. And then, of course, the Burning Abyss monsters do not miss something, so they would go off and, you know, do their thing. Which would be broke. You know, same thing with Shadal's. But, uh, you know, by changing it so, you know, the turn you activate this effect, uh, you cannot activate other card effects. So, you know, they don't have Burning Abyss there in OCG land, but here, in, and they do have uh, Shadal. So, if you do do this, and Shadal monsters are sent to the your Shadal monsters are sent to grave, they will not get their effects because no other card effect can be activated. My problem with it is, is that you didn't fix the 
the problem that makes Cat Emperor broke. This whole pay one thousand, send all cards, and on the field in both players' hands to, and then you know that that part right there is broke. It's not the three hundred. It's not. It's the sending all cards on the field and in both players' hands. Yeah, that's broke. That's literally shutting the duel down. You literally just shut the whole duel down. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game of resources, and you literally just tell this guy to take all the resources. Now, yeah, sure, you can't activate card effects the turn that you activate this. That's fine. So, you got you summon this guy, you send everything, so you have no cards, your opponent has no cards, the, the field is barren, the duel is, is barren. This is, this is a naked field, it's a wasteland out here. Your opponent, of course, you pass, you're on your turn, can't do anything, you know, pass to your opponent. You, well, you can still, oh well, no, yeah, you know, you would have nothing, you'd have nothing, your opponent would have nothing. So, you pass to your opponent, your opponent draws. Well, whatever they draw, right? Think about one of the main decks that you can think about that this card will definitely be in. Is something involving Lightstorm Rulers? Yeah, Lightstorm Rulers. So, all they need to do is just have, you know, a couple Wyverns sitting in the graveyard, getting ready to summon JD, or get search for JD, and a Dragon Rule. So, you just go, alright, summon Emperor, send everything, your opponent draws one card. Hopefully that's enough, because you're gonna go, draw my card, alright. Uh, my Dragon Ruler, in fact, banish the Wyvern special, summon my Dragon Ruler, I'm gonna go ahead and get my my JDs on, some of my JDs game, like, Chaos Emperor only promotes more OTKing and consistency with that deck. You know, it just promotes, and of course, guess what? Guess who Wyvern can search? Yeah, they see this? This is a level 8 Dragon. Level 8 Dragon, Dark. Yes, Eclipse Wyvern can search Chaos Emperor. Like, that was dumb, in my opinion. I don't like that. I think I think out of all the cards that come off ban, I think um, Chaos Emperor was the dumbest. Like, you didn't fix it. Besides this whole, you cannot activate cards effects, you, uh, the turn you activate this effect, it's still Chaos Emperor. So, yeah. So that's why the thumbnail is that, because I still think it's broken. Because you can, you know, depending on what deck it is and the deck that it will be played in, of course, Lightstorm Rulers, that deck can easily bounce back by having no cards in hand because it runs the Dragon Rulers, or which, were, which were, of course, a deck that can, you know, survive a Chaos Emperor hit. So, there you go. All right, so back to the list. All right, Sinister Serpent. Sinister Serpent back. All right, let's go ahead and look at Sinister Serpent. All right, Sinister Serpent's effect is changed to you can only use the effect of Sinister Serpent once per turn. During your standby phase, if this card's in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. All right, there's Sinister Serpent. You know, it's been banned for a cool minute now because it pretty much makes cards uh, costless. You know, think about it. You know, you you know you see cards like um you know uh, Karma Cut and Phoenix Woman Blast being played. You know now with Burning Abyss. You know with freaking Sinister Serpent, you'd be seeing that all the time because during the December phase, they would just get the card, the Sinister Serpent, right back to their hand and then keep playing it. You know, it makes cards that are really good but require a cost, so it would be a neg one, you know, a one for one, you know? So, that's why Burning Abyss like cards like Karma Cut and Phoenix Woman Blast because they'll go, you know, activate my Phoenix Woman Blast. I'll just card a Burning Abyss, spin back, so, you know, I'm using two cards for your one, but then, of course, my Burning Abyss would go off, so then I plus, so it's a one for one. You know, so it's just something would be the exact same thing. It makes cards that are really good, but you require a cost. It would make them really good because it would be costless. You know, Mermels, it's a water, so, you know, those, you know, pitching, you would always have the Sinister Serpent come back to your hand. So you would always have that water monster for your uh, Megalos and your Tiasas. But, you know, Sinister Serpent was long banned before that. Anyway, they eroded it, so that's what it's used effectively to be, but they added on a little bit at the end. Alright, during your opponent's next end phase, banish one Sinister Serpent from your graveyard. Yes. So, that, that's where I'm kind of finding it. It's kind of like, eh, you know. So, this card has to be in your graveyard during your standby phase, but not in your graveyard during your opponent's next end phase. And that, that that's where it could be a problem. And that's why Sinister Serpent might be like, ah, you know. Because, of course, your opponent's next end phase comes before your standby phase. So you can go, Mathematician, send Sinister Serpent. All right, go ahead. You know, and then your opponent's end phase, Sinister Serpent be like, yeah, during your opponent's next end phase, which is right now, banish the Sinister Serpent. All right, I'm gone. Peace, y'all. So, you know, that, that, that's, that hurts, you know. So you pretty much get, what, one use out of this, maybe? One use out of this? So... You know, that 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 rata hurts. That rata hurts, you know. So it seems like the way that they're doing it, it looks like with this rata, Sinister Serpent could probably go up to three. It it would be okay. Because 
just because you have to banish a Sinister Serpent in your graveyard. So if you can send multiple Sinister Serpents, you can keep that going for a little while. But of course, they put Sinister Serpent into one, test out the waters, that's fine. But that Arata hurts, like, damn. Like, that's not even Sinister Serpent. That's not even Sinister anymore. This is Cuddly Serpent. That's not Sinister anymore. There's nothing Sinister about this Serpent. Like, wow, during your opponent's next end phase, banish one Sinister Serpent. You only got one, so you pretty much get to use this guy once. One and done. You know, unless you can go ahead and return him from the banish, so. There you go. There's Sinister Serpent, so Sinister Serpent back at one. Alright, uh, Blaze Phoenix of the Burning the burning Bombardment Bird. Oh my god. Um, there is a, apparently OTK loop with this card and uh, Noden, so, you know, I guess instead of hitting Noden, they decided to go ahead and hit Blaze Phoenix, so that's fine. Alright, so... As you guys know, the top decks here in uh, TCG land are Burning Abyss, Cleplay, and Shadals. No argument. In OCG land, the top decks in order are Nefclops, Cleplay, and Shadals. So Nefclops are number one. And on this ban list, they decided to kick Nefclops in the nuts so hard that they're crying right now. Like, d like the whole argument about, oh, they're not going to hit a new deck is too new. Not for OCG, because they will clearly hit that. Because I think Necros or Nefclops are the newest out of all of the top decks in the OCG. And they got hit the hardest. Cleplets, unscathed. Nefclops, get it hard. So let's begin with the Nefclops. Senju of a thousand hands. Which one's Senju? Senju's the one that searches for uh, the um, Senju of a thousand hands. Is that the one that searches for the, the, the ritual spell? The monster. This is a monster. When when a when this card is normal summon or fire summon, you can add one ritual monster from your deck to him. So, I know they probably went Manju summon search for Bryonic and Bryonic can search for almost anything. That's probably pretty much the point. So hit Senju two one Senju one. But we're not done. We're not done. Manju two one Senju and Manju. That is ridiculous. So of course Manju does the same thing as Senju except it can search for the quest the the ritual spell or the monster. So both of them, both of them, Senju and Manju. I know Manju, I could see Senju. Like, damn, that's fucked up. What's next? Freaking what? Freaking uh, what is it? Fucking fucking Sonic Bird. What? What the hell is the name of that fucking bird? I don't know. I don't remember. But it searches for the ritual spell. Like, damn, that hurts. That hurts. But we're not done with Necros. We need to kick them hard. Unicorn, Unicorn, two one. Damn, Unicorn was. Probably the one of the strongest monsters in the deck besides Trishula, Unicorn was definitely there. You know, Unicorn being able to go ahead and play your Kaleido Mirror and you know send um, the the Herald, the Synchro Herald, get your search on and summon Unicorn. Unicorn, you know, locks it down. You know, you know the effects of XC. Was it XC monsters or monster specials from the extra deck? I can't remember what Unicorn is. It's one of the two, but. I think those monster specials from the extra deck had their effects negated, and, you know, that was kind of difficult to, to get over, you know? But Unicorn, like, damn. Like, all right. There you go. So, Senju, Manju, and Unicorn all at one. Damn, kicking, kicking Nef Nefcloth. Kicking them hard. All right, next. Instafusion. All right, that's a given. You know, like I said, Noden. Noden is stupid. I'm glad that OCG Konami realized that Noden is stupid. We don't have it here in TCG land, but, you know, hitting Instafusion down to one, that was a fine choice. Because Instafusion was kind of a dumb card within itself. So, you know, instead of hitting the Noden and allowing Instafusion to still be, you know, rampant, hitting the Instafusion and keeping the Noden now. That's fine. That's fine. So, I understand that. I understand that. All right. Next. Temple of the Kings. Yes. Temple of the Kings. So, if you guys... Uh, don't remember what Temple of Kings does. It has a second effect, but its main effect is, you know, as long as it's, it's a continuous spell, as long as it's card straight up in the field, you can play trap cards from your hand. So, that was pretty broke, right? So, let's go ahead and look at uh, Temple of the Kings. So, you can only use each effect of Temple of the Kings once per turn. You can activate one trap card you control during the turn that is set. One. During the turn that is set. One. So, you know, instead of just being able to play as many trap cards as you want from your hand, as much as you want, you know, just bam, 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 you only get one. You know, it's like Spider-Man, you only get one. So, you know, if you want to go ahead and set the Reckless Greed and activate the Reckless Greed, or set the Call of the Haunted and activate the Call of the Haunted during the turn, uh, you can go ahead and do it. So, that's still pretty good. I can actually see this card being played. I think that's actually pretty interesting, you know. I think it might be interesting to go ahead and, you know, activate, you know, uh, Call of the Haunted, 
during your turn. That might be pretty cool. Or an oasis, you know, or, you know, Telenite's being able to uh, activate, uh, you know, Nova during your turn, you know, the turn that it's set, you know. So that's actually not terrible, um, you know. Uh, you know, Kleeputs can activate Skill Drain on their turn or their own trap card, their uh, Reclip Port, you know, or whatever. Uh, vanities, Vanities can be activated the turn that you set it. So, you know, if you set a Vanities and your opponent thinks that they're going to freaking, like, you know, you know, play a call in the Haunted, you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to do Temple of the Kings. I can just play this Vanities the turn that I set it, you know. It's only one, though, but that's pretty that's pretty powerful, you know. Shawls, they can play Core. They can just go ahead and set Core, activate Core, summon Core, fuse with Core. So, you know, I, I can actually see this card actually getting some play. So, interesting. This other second effect, you know, you, you, set, you can send both this card and one face up. Mystical Beast Circuit to the Great Resident Summon one monster from your hand deck or one free or free, one fusion monster from your action deck. I don't know what Mystical Beast Secret what is what is that? Hold on, what what is that? I mean I don't think anybody's gonna play it, but you know, being able to summon, you know, any monster from anywhere. Interesting. Mystical Beast Mystical Beast there you are. Oh, okay. Alright, destroy this card if you do not control Temple of the King. These time this card is trying to be destroy monsters, move from play, and this card came to. Okay, so that's a one tribute. Like, I guess. But you have to send both this and Temple of the King to summon one monster from your hand or deck or one monster from your fusion or your fusion from your extra deck. It's okay. I don't think anybody's gonna commit to doing this. You know, you might be able to do something, maybe like Pendulum Summon this guy, but you can't, you know, he's destroyed if you do not control Temple of Kings. Temple of Kings at one, so, I don't know. Overall, it's okay. It's okay. It's a good card now. It's a good card. You know, it's one of those at one really good cards, you know. I put it in the same boat as like Soul Charge and, you know, Dark Hole Regeki, stuff like that. It's a really good card at one, so, there you go. Alright, so that's at one. Alright, we're not done. We're not done. Did I say that we were done hitting freaking Necros? No. Preparation of Rights to one. Damn. 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 Senju, Manju, Unicorn, and Preparation of Rights all to one. Zam! Kick them Necros. Like, damn. They don't want nothing to do with Necros. So, Necros are hurting. Kleeputs, untouched, unscathed. They love them some Kleeputs. They love some Kleeput, all right? So, there you go. Necros, get it. All right. Next, Symbol of Heritage. All right, let's go ahead and look up this card. Symbol of Heritage. I know why this card got hit. You guys probably don't. I'll, I'll explain it when I get to another card. But uh, pretty much simple. The heritage is a cross spell. Activate only while there are three monster cards with the same name in the graveyard. You select one of those monsters, special summon it, and equip it. So that's the jest. You'll understand when we get farther down the list. So we'll, we'll skip that one right, right now and come back to it at the end. All right. Super Poly. They put Super Poly on one. We put Super Poly to one. They probably like, you know what, TCG? They are smart. Super Poly to one. It should be at one. You know, so they hit Super Poly to one as well. So there you go. Super Poly is one in both OCG and TCG. So there you go. All right. Next card. Harpy's motherfucking Feather Duster. Yes. 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 All right. You, you, you want me to go on this page? All right. Let me scroll up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. No. There is no errata for Harpy's Feather Duster because Harpy's Feather Duster did not get an errata. Harpy's Feather Duster is Harpy's fucking Feather Duster. Yes. I'm not shitting you. So, yeah. You're probably thinking, wait, 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 wait. They banned Heavy Storm but brought back Happy Feather Duster. Hello? Like, that's stupid. That's stupid. That's, that's, Harpy's Feather Duster is even more broken because you only wipe your opponent's shit. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to explain to you why they did this and you're going to realize why it's this. Alright. So what I've been saying in this video. OCG loves hearts. Kleeput. Kleeport, right? Right. Why do they want Heavy Storm where you can Heavy Storm your own pendulum scales? Instead, Harpy's Feather Duster, Harpy's Feather Duster is your opponent's field, then you won't hit your own scales. Ah! Oh, that's the reason why. It's stupid! Yes, it is. But that's the reason why. So you can hit just your opponent and not hit your own scales. Cleeport. We love the Cleeport. We love them. Heart Cleeport. They're our first pendulum deck and we love them. So I see you. I see you. So instead of hitting Cleeport, instead of hitting anything wrong with Cleeport, instead of hitting Skill Drain, which you should have done OTG, you're like, nah, let it go. Let it go. Nothing hit on Cleeport. We're going to take away Heavy Storm and we're going to give them Harpy Feather Dust here. Because that's to make sure that they OTK. Our babies, Cleeport, can OTK. Boo to them, stupid old Nefclops. It's all about 
on uh, clip points. Even hit Super Poly for the Shadol. It's like, damn. All right, all right, all right. So I get it. You love clip art. I get it. I get it, OCG. All right, so we'll go ahead and, you know, we're getting our list soon, so let's go ahead and see what we got. You know, usually I'd like to see some set precedents off of the OCG list for maybe TCG list, but I don't see shit. That ain't shit. You know, Chaos Emperor coming back? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so next card, Exchange of the Spirit. Oh, yeah, so that one actually got an errata, so here we go. Exchange of Spirit. You can only activate one Exchange of Spirit per duel, right? If each player has 15 or more cards in their graveyard, pay 1,000 life points. Both players swap cards in their deck with cards in their graveyard, then shuffle the deck. All right, so this card is actually still pretty strong. So, of course, you can only activate one uh, exchange of spirit per duel, so don't be surprised if this card goes up to three on the next ban list, just because you can only activate one one per duel, right? Just like with uh, Spore and Glow Bulb. But uh, you know, now instead of it being like each player, you know, only you having 15 cards, and then you pretty much OTK your opponent, because that's what it used to do. Each player has to have 15 cards. You pay a thousand life points, and you swap the decks with the graveyard. The only thing is that. Do the Shadals still get the Shadals don't miss timing, right? So, if you do this, every Shadal monster that was sent to the graveyard, because it would be sent to the graveyard, right? Because it was sent to the graveyard. You know, same thing with Burning Abyss, you know? It was sent to the graveyard. They would get their effects, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? So, I don't know. I don't know. But swapping the graveyard with the decks and then all the monsters would, you know, of course, get all their effects. So, I don't know about this one. This one seems like a real, this is something like it could be a problem. You know, you should have rather did a little, and you shouldn't have bred this back. And this card's kind of unhealthy. You just be able to switch the graveyard with the deck. I don't know. I don't know. But, all right, let's go ahead and see. Maybe we'll turn around and see this card getting banned on the next list because this one seems a little powerful. You know, it's like, it's like, Chaos Emperor level where you eroded it, but it's still kind of just unhealthy. So I don't know. Maybe I'm in the wrong, but I kind of feel like, you know, that may not be the best of things. All right. Next. Crush card. I know. Crush card? Yeah. Crush card. All right. Let's go to see Crush card. All right. Here's Crush card. All right. Crush card. Tribute one dark monster you control with a thousand attack or less. Check your opponent's hand and all monsters they control. Destroy all monsters with 1500 attack or more. All right. So that's pretty much the same. You know. You distribute a dark monster with a thousand attack or less, and you get to destroy all the monsters that your opponent controls and in their hand for 1,500 or more attack. Alright, but the thing that they change is you do not get to look in your opponent's hand for the next three turns. Yes, and they added something else. Then, your opponent can destroy up to three monsters with 1,500 attack or more from their deck. Yes. So, it's kind of like, hey, I'm going to hit you, but then you can go ahead and turn it. So, your opponent can can up to three so they don't have to they can say none at all but they can select three so you can just draw inside the grave so literally if your opponent goes crush card on you you'll be like all right uh, i'm gonna destroy three uh, uh monsters in my deck that have 1500 or more attack you know all right, i'm gonna send three equips wyverns effect 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 banish 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 so you know that i guess that's kind of like the balancing side your opponent can choose you can always say no i don't want none but you can always so if the monster has 1,500 attack or more, it's kind of like a foolish, you know? So, you know, that's kind of balanced out. Alright, also, after you activate this card, all damage your opponent takes until the end of the next turn becomes zero. So, you know, you can't go crush card and then just, you know, beat the crap out of them for at least one turn. At least they're going to give you at least one turn to get back. So, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, you know... It's still a pretty powerful card, but then, you know, you gotta look at it, you know. Uh, you know, would you ever want to do this against, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, Cleaport or, you know, or, you know, Shadows or, you know, Burning Abyss? Definitely not. So, you know, I can see where they're coming from, but, uh, you know, it seems like a kind of, like, uh, a rogue matchup card. So, I could see maybe, like, if this card existed, Burning Abyss kind of putting, maybe, like, siding in one or maybe main decking one just to hit the, the rogue matchup. You know, because that would probably have the rogue matchup, definitely. You know, because the monsters that you your opponent sends have to be 1,500 or more attacks. So even the monsters that they generally would like to send are generally lower attacks, you know. Synchro decks would like to send, you know, like Level Eater and, you know, and Glow Up Ball, but, you know, that's not 1,500 or more attack. Even me, you bell, I can't send you bell. The only way I can summon is Doom Shaman, so, you know, that's not the best either. So, you know, I can, I can see, you know, Burning Abyss maybe doing something with this. You know, go ahead and tribute to Skarm and get your opponent in his Skarm effect, so. <coughs> Not terrible. Not terrible. So, okay. That's a fine Arata. Alright. 
And the last errata, Ring of Destruction. Let's go ahead and look at Ring of Destruction. All right. You can only activate one Ring of Destruction per turn. All right. During your opponent's turn. So, during your opponent's turn. Not during your turn. During your opponent's turn. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls whose attack is lower than or equal to your opponent's life points. Destroy that face-up monster. And if you do... You take damage equal to that monster's original attack, then inflict damage equal to the damage to your opponent equal to the damage that you took. All right. So one of the main reasons why Ring of Destruction is banned is because it creates draws, and Konami hates draws. So pretty much, you know, you have you know your opponent. Would, let's say for example, uh, your opponent has two thousand life points, and you have one thousand life points, and you have a Judgment Dragon on the field. You go Ring of Destruction, blow up the Judgment Dragon. Both of you guys at the same time would take three thousand, and it would be a draw. And that's one of the key reasons why this card is banned, because it creates drop. Now, with the Serata, it doesn't anymore, all right? So, also, you know, it also finished up games, so you would go, like, you know, just like with Dark Shot Fighter, you would go attack, 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 main phase two, I'm going to bring your structure my monster, we both take it, but your life points are lower, it's so a game, you know? So, that was another reason, but they changed it. So, it's only during your opponent's turn, and you can only blow up your opponent's monsters. Because you know, that was one of the things. You would blow up your monster on your turn, and your opponent would take the damage for game. But they changed it. You can only do it on your opponent's turn, blow up only your opponent's monsters, and attack has to be lower or equal to your opponent's life point. So you can game your opponent as long as your opponent's the monster's attack is exactly equal. So you can't even destroy a monster whose attack. So if your opponent only has 1,000 life points left, and they summon a monster with 2,000, you can't bring a destruction it because that attack is more than your opponent. So it has to be lower than or equal to. So that's a nice balancing factor. Destroy it. All right. So to prevent from draws, you take the damage, then your opponent. So that holds, that, that, that let's, let's go back to that Judgment Dragon example. You have 1,000 life points. Your opponent has um, 2,000. Well, you wouldn't be able to activate it. Well, all right. Your opponent has... You, all right. Let me say it. You have 1,000 life points. Your opponent has 2,000. Your opponent summons a monster that's 2,000 attack. You go Ring of Destruction, blow up your opponent's monster. You take the damage, then your opponent, so you would lose the duel before your opponent would lose the duel. You, the first part has to resolve before, because it says then. So you would take the damage before your opponent, so you would lose the duel before your opponent would take the damage, creating the draw. So that's a final errata. That's a final errata. I, I think that this might be maybe the best errata, because it literally addresses every single problem that Ring of Destruction had. So that's okay. I understand that. All right, so there you go. Those are all the Arados. Those are all the limited cards. There you go. So this is interesting. I mean, Konami did say they wanted to unban every single card on the ban list. So, what, you know, some of these cards were just so broken that you just had to errata it, you know? So what's next? Pot of Greed? You know, what's next? You know, activate Pot of... You know, it has to be played at the start of your main phase. You play, you draw two, and you can't, you know, activate any other card effects to, you know, for the rest of the turn. You know? I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. But, uh... You know, there you go. Those are, those are some banned cards that are bad. So I'd say, uh, oh, you know, recap my opinion. Cast Emperor is still broken. Sinister Serpent's fine. Um, Temple of Kings is interesting. Um, Harpy's Better Duster is still broken, but you didn't get around to change. Exchange of the Spirit is still kind of broken. Uh, Crush Guard Virus is kind of cute, but it's okay. And Ring of Destruction is probably the best around out of one, which is actually an okay card. You know, it's still good, but it's an okay card. All right, so there you go. Those are all the limited. So let's go over the semi-limited because we have some lim semi-limited here. All right, so, you know, they are very, very liberal over there. They're liberal. I'm, you know, here in TCG land, we're, we're kind of conservative. Like, you know, there's no reason to bring back old cards and old decks if it's not going to make us money. So, you know, there's no reason to bring back those cards. But, you know, OCG has been doing a pretty good job of just taking cards and bringing cards back and taking them off the list. Starting off, Injector Hornets stank up to two. So now they have two Hornets, which is fine. I don't think Injector is going to be playing at all, so... No, that's fine. So, there you go. Two Hornets. I know some people are saying that Hornet should go up to two on our TCG list, but, you know, it depends on how Konami feels about Zectors. You know, you know Zectors did win Worlds, so, you know, I'm not sure, but, you know, definitely Hornet to two. All right. Lunch and Dragoons to two. So, they hit, you know, Mermails a couple of times, but, uh, you know, they put Dragoons back up to two. All right. All right. You know, they still have TS at one, so that's still, you know, TS is like the leader of that deck, so, you know, that still hurts. But Dragoons up to two, so... You know, there you go, Snyder from Reynolds. Big Eye back up to two. So they hit Big Eye to one on their list. Well, we still have Big Eye at three, right? So they're bringing Big Eye back up to two. I mean, Big Eye at three was never a problem. It's always the Dragon Rulers. So there you go. You know, they put Big Eye to one, but then they kept the Dragon Rulers at three. Then they put the Dragon Rulers to two. Then they put the Dragon Rulers to one. So, you know, eventually they learned where the Dragon Rulers should be. So there you go. All right. Um, 
uh, rooster. So, of course, we hit spirit. They hit, you know, uh, you know, cock. They hit, you know, rooster. So, uh, you know, that's, that's different. That was one of the differences with our list is that we hit, we hit, um, we hit spirit. They hit rooster. Well, you know what? Rooster is not even that powerful. It's spirit. Spirit, spirit's the broken one. So, you know, they could, if they wanted to, they could really bring rooster up to three. I mean, that's not going to do shit. But uh, it, it's it's uh, it's spirit that's the really strong one. So yeah. could spirit go up to two on our list? I mean, I guess. I mean, no one's playing Fire Fist. But like I said, I'm super conservative. I'm like, if it ain't broke, they'll fix it. And you know, unless the deck is making me money, there's no reason for me to move anything. So there you go. And then they put Monster Gate up to two. So I guess they're like, Monster Gate's been on here for a while. Let's go ahead and put it up to two. And uh, you know, let's move it for I guess maybe like um, Infernoids. Maybe I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, there you go. Monster Gate up to two, so I know that's a lot of people want that to happen here at uh, TCG. So maybe, maybe. All right, so there you go. Those are all the cards of two, semi limited. So let's go unlimited. All right, so it was all up again. So they had Ophion at three, then they hit it to one, then I put it to two. Now it's at three again. So you know, uh, Ophion, Evil Swarms are pretty much back at full power. They had three Ophion, three Thunder Kings, three Rabbits, th you know, the, the works, three, three Soul Drains, three. Um, uh, macros, three D Fisher, three vanities. So they had the works over there. So you know, but they're they're remember their game plays faster. They're faster than us. So you know, if that's what they want to do, all right. Uh, never just back up to three. So it went three to two to three. So you know, the thing with OCG Konami is they're they, they don't give they don't give things a while to sit. You know, they hit something on the previous list or the list before. Then they'll be like, you know what, we hit it and it's not doing anything. Let's put it back up. Like. The whole point of you hitting it was to stop it from doing what it was doing. But then if you just let it go, then it starts doing what it's doing again. You know? It's, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that about OCG Konami and their ban list. Because they always do that. They always do that. Like, you know what? Dark Arm's not doing much at one. Let's put it to two. Oh, no, 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 no. Back to round one. No, that was stupid. Like, see? Like, how many times do you guys got to fuck up before you get it right? But, you know, they're much more liberal than us. You know? I'm like, you know what, if Nebradis was causing so many problems that like you needed to hit it, then why, you know, unhit it, like, not even, what, one to two lists later? Like, one to two lists later. I shit you not, it's ridiculous, ridiculous. Alright, next, Card Trooper, alright, so, Troop, Dupe, Scoop, as a thing, I guess, you know. So, Card Troopers back at three, you got three Card Troopers, three, um, Curry Bandit, three Mathematician, Chaos Emperor, yeah, you might see some Light Storm. Some uh, Light Storm Rule with Chaos Emperor splashed in in the OCG. That might be, you know, interesting to see. So, there you go. Car Trooper back at three. We still have him at two. TG Striker at three. All right, we have three, and he's not doing anything. They decided to go with Trigodi at three. All right. I mean, Trigodi is stronger than Gores, and I believe they have Gores at three. We have Gores at two and Trigodi at two. Gores could go up to three. Uh, Trigodi, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if anybody will play. The thing, the argument is, will anybody play it? Can, is Trigodi strong enough to just stay at two? Yes, he is, because Trigodi is very powerful. But, uh, no, will anybody play it at three? That's the question, you know. Is, uh, is, T is TCG Konami willing to take that risk and try it out? I don't know. No, I don't know. We'll find out on our list whether they want to put Trigodi up to, to three because they put Gores up to two, did nothing. So they might put Gores up to three, but I'm not sure about Trag. All right, Lone Fire. Lone Fire to three. All right, so, of course, we have Lone Fire at two. They just put Lone Fire up to three. All right, so this is where I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So Lone Fire at three, right? Remember up here? Uh, symbol of Heritage, right? Symbol of Heritage. Lone Fire, think about it. Activate only while there are three monster cards with the same name in your graveyard. Lone Fire. Lone Fire. Lone Fire. Something else. Symbol of Heritage. Summon a Lone Fire. Lone Fire. You know? Lone Fire is not once per turn, and Lone Fire can summon itself. So, through one Lone Fire, you can get all three Lone Fires in the graveyard, therefore making this card a monster reborn just for Lone Fire to continue using Lone Fire, Lone Fire, Lone Fire. So, there you go. So, I guess they're like, you know what, if we're going to go ahead and put, um, you know, Lone Fire to three, then we got to hit um, Symbol Heritage. In my opinion, Lone Fire at two is fine. You shouldn't, I don't think Lone Fire should be anything higher than two, but, you know, like I said, they're way liberal. I'm like, no, but they're like, yeah, so there you go. All right. Uh, back at three, Heroic Seal Convocation, like I said, you need to fucking decide. It's three to two to 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 three to two, three to two. like, god damn it, just leave it at two, like, there's no, you know, I don't know, a ton of people like, Heroic Seal should go back up to three, like, why? Why? You know, I'm, like I said, I'm probably thinking more to in the business of it, but why? Why should I, you know, tell me, tell me, good, give me a good reason why Heroic Seal Convocation can go up to three. 
so people can play Herodix. I want them to play Herodix or Herodix. I don't want them to play that deck. That deck's not making me any money. Why should I move anything on that deck, you know? Dumb. Like, you know? So I put it back up to three. I wonder if we'll get it back up to three. And then I go to two. And then I go to three. And then two. And then three. And then two. And then three. It's like, oh my god. Annoying. All right, next. A hero lives. Back up to three. So they had a hero lives at two and bubble man at two. And on my ban list prediction, when I, I unbanned Stratos, I predicted that we would copy off the OCG and put a hero lives at two and bubble man to two. They decided to go ahead and put heroes up, uh, lives up to three. You know, you can clearly see the structure deck sitting over here. It's coming out January 30th. There you go. So, you know, free my nigga Stratos. You know, free my nigga freaking free my nigga Chaos Emperor. Oh, smoking that good shit, but, you know. I, in my opinion, Hero Lives is probably one of the most powerful cards in the structure, in that deck. You know, being able to just go Hero Lives, pay half your life points, special summon a Shadow Mist, Shadow Mist, search for the the Mass Change, set the Mass Change during your opponent's turn, Mass Change during the Dark Wall, Dark Wall, Shadow Mist would, of course, search you because you can't activate the, the effects the same turn that, you know, affects the same turn. So if you special, if you special summon a search for the Mass Change, you can't, you won't get your search effect, so you just activate during your opponent's turn. So I think, you know, Hero Lives is one of the most powerful cards that that deck had. So, um, you know, they decided to go ahead and put it up to three. I, I mean, I wouldn't, but, you know, maybe they like heroes. Maybe I see heroes top every once in a while on the OCG list, but not much. All right. And then last but not least, Ojama Trio. So, uh, <laughs> Ojama Trio is pretty interesting because, uh, you know, Ojama Trio has been sitting there too for a cool minute. So I guess we're just like, all right, we can just go ahead and take it off. You know, it, it's okay, if, you know, if you're, if, you know, your opponent plays their drama trio and full like your freaking field with tokens and then you can't play any monsters. That ah, that's fine, that's fine. So I guess. I said I guess, you know. Drama Trio actually went up in price and has got bought a couple times, uh, you know, by uh by my uh one of my viewers and uh, supporters and friends and also I subscribed to him uh my friend Stu Dog. He he actually did a video and he was like, Wow, Drama Trio is going up, what's up with that? Because, you know. It's predicted that John Matrio will go up to three on this list. So there you go, John Matrio at three. All right. So there you go. This video is super long, but I went over the entire OCG January 2015 ban list. So some crazy shit. So as you can clearly see, nothing Cleaport related. Nothing Cleaport or Cleaport or whatever you want to call it related. Nothing. Nothing. You got a little bit of Shadows with the Super Poly. You completely crushed Necros. Like this, this, this. This completely kicked them in the nuts, but good points unscathed. No skill drain, no vanities, no nothing. You took their heavy storm, which hurt them because it would blow up their skills, and gave them Harpy Shadow Duster. Un erotic. <coughs> you love Cleaport, it's obvious, OCG, so you have fun over there. If anybody wants to, you know, play Cleaport like that, and go over to OCG land, because here, you know, I don't know, you know. We might get an I hope we get an indirect hit of skill drain going down to one. You know, that that's a, that's all I can ask for. I don't want the deck to be dead. You know, I'm seeing some people saying, you know, Summer's Art getting hit or Scout getting hit, but no. I think that uh literally uh, you know, the indirect to hit to skill drain would be enough. So yeah. Alright, so this video is long, but I hope you guys still enjoyed sitting through it, me explaining things in my opinion. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys at our band list. Alright, thanks for watching.